Welcome. Let's discuss segments of chords in circles. Remember that a chord is a line segment that connects two points in the circumference of the circle. When we introduce another chord that intersects the chord that we have just drawn, let's call the intersection P, notice that we have cut each chord into smaller pieces. The initial chord, AB, notice that it got divided into the line segment AD and DV. And each of those segments is what we refer to as the segments of chords. And the same occurs in the chord CD. Notice that the intersection cuts this chord into pieces, line segment CP and line segment PAD. Let's give some names to the segment chord. The line segment CP, let's call it T. The line segment PD, let's call it U. The line segment AP, let's call it R. And the line segment PB, let's call it S. Those segments, of course, have a property they share in common. If we've multiplied two segments of chords that belong in the same chord. In other words, if you multiply the line segment R and the line segment S, that is going to be equal to the multiplication of the line segment T times the line segment of U. If we consider the intersection of those two chords, the multiplication of the line segments that belong to the same chord will be equal to the multiplication of the line segments of the other chord. Let's show why this is true. Here we have the same situation as before. We got two chords and they are intersecting at point P. So now let's consider a line segment that connects point A to D. And let's consider another line segment that connects point C to B. Now we can consider some inscribed angles. Notice that angle A it is an inscribed angle that intersects the arc CB. The inscribed angle of C, it intersects the same arc. So if we give a name to that angle, let's call this angle one, and let's call this angle two, we can claim that those two angles are congruent to each other because they intersect the same arc. Now, if we consider the inscribed angle of B, Notice that it intersects the arc of CA. The same can be said about the inscribed angle of D. It also intersects the arc of AC. So if we call this angle 3, and we call this angle 4, we can say that those two angles are congruent to each other because those inscribed angles intersected the same arc. So if we consider the triangle on the top and we consider the triangle on the bottom, we can claim that those two triangles are similar to each other by the angle-angle similarity theorem. They both share two pairs of congruent angles. Now knowing that we have similar triangles, then we know that corresponding parts are in proportion. Remembering that angle 3 was congruent to angle 4, then those sides opposite to them must be in proportion. And remembering that angle 1 was congruent to angle 2, then the opposite sides are in proportion. And when we cross multiply, Now 
we will obtain the result that we wanted to show. If we multiply the segments of chords that belong in the chord AB, that is equivalent to the segments of chords that belong on the chord CD. Hello, if you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.